I'm going to wait for another minute before I begin today's session so that other students can join in and then we will begin. Okay, so hello, a warm welcome to all of you. Good evening to everyone. Today is the first day of your MA Economics entrance preparation. But this course is going to be a very rigorous one. And uh, this is going to be a full one year preparation in which we are going to go ahead and take you through five classes a week believe me we we don't stop at five more often it, it goes to six or seven also once we pick up the pace and you know once i am <clears throat> towards november december you will see me asking you coming all seven days a week on nine and taking lectures with me and we would be having weekly tests and a lot of assignments you will see me giving you the first homework assignment today right so we will have a lot of assignments, a lot of homework, a lot of weekly tests and mock tests. So this is going to be a very, very rigorous course that I'm going to go ahead and, you know, we are going to start. Now, the way, the only way actually to success is if you do your homework on the day it is given to you, right? So you have to go ahead and do all the tests that are given to you on the right day. That's on the weekend. And um, my aim would be to cover your course by the end of December, right? Post which we will begin with um, the computer-based mock test series in which you will be given mock. I will be providing you a complete timetable. So, you know, we will have 10 mock tests of IIT, then GATE, then other entrance exams and so on and so forth. So, so it's going to be a uh, syllabus till December followed by different mock papers. Now, I will be taking micro, macro, statistics, and econometrics with you. And Arun sir would be taking the maths part with you. Try to be as regular, as consistent. Now, I'll tell you, initially, you know, students are super regular. But when it comes to difficult topics, the moment, you know, I, I start talking about complex utility functions, I see that students just they, they skip classes. The key to success is consistency. Even when topics are getting harder, you have to be consistent. You have to be there with me. That's the key to success, right? So, so, so you know, let me start by telling you that every year I see three type of students in the class. The first is the students were very, very enthusiastic in the beginning. They will ask a lot of doubts. They will be very active on the group. But but by September, October, I will see a dip, right? So if 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 you know, I can go on your portal and I can check who is studying for how many hours, who has seen which video, who has seen, who has done how many tests. And I will see a, a sharp decrease in, in the way that they were studying earlier and now. That is because they have started getting bored. Right. This is too much. They don't want to do it throughout. You know, they, they cannot follow the same eight hour pattern or six hour pattern or four hour pattern every day that they were doing in the beginning. The second is students who don't start at the beginning. They just keep taking things for granted. And later at the end, you know, they will come up and tell me, ma'am, you know, I had these semester exams and mid sem exams and this and that. And now I, I don't know what to do. Third would be the students who would dedicate one to two hours a day. They will be the one who will succeed. You don't have to do too much. You don't have to do too less. You have to do exactly the appropriate proportion. You have to go ahead and study only one, one and a half hours a day. That is enough. Live lecture followed by the homework. And believe me, there is no stopping by. 
you will get into all the good institutes that are there for MA economics, right? So, so before you know, I mean, I can I I will give you a lot of yarn during these lectures, but for now, I think we are good to go, and we are going to start with today's lecture. But in this lecture, I am going to start with the base. But you will see me today that how we will slowly take the base to a next level, and how we will develop some complicated concepts within that base. Right. So the topic for the day. Acha, one more thing. Keep a separate notebook for microeconomics. Each subject should have a separate notebook. There should be no confusion in that, so that you can just pick up that notebook at the end, and you can just focus on that notebook for revision. Us time, but you don't have time to go through the lectures. So notebook should suffice. Okay. So 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 today's topic, beta, in a separate notebook. As we start, should be Marshallian and Hicksian demand functions. Right? It should be Marshallian and Hicksian demand functions. Now, I will begin with very basic preferences today. Every one of you should be aware of these preferences because everything in microeconomics is built up on these so if you do these well then only you will be able to do questions on general equilibrium questions in the producer theory any kind of question you have to be thorough with what basic preferences we build in the next 2 3 classes okay so so the preference i want to begin with today this is u is equal to x y but this is called as the cobb douglas utility function now now when we talk about the cobb douglas utility function this is the most common and well defined preference that we have well defined preference now what we mean by well defined what are the different things that we have to check we will take that through but before we go ahead and take those through we must understand that whenever i write this u is equal to xy this utility function actually represents what we call as an indifference curve and we know what an indifference curve is an indifference curve in the most simple sense is different combinations of x and y that give you the same level of utility so different combinations of x and y that give you the same level of utility so so we need to go ahead and we need to hold utility constant at some level and ask what are the different combinations of x and y that will give me this level of utility that will formulate my difference curve so let us go ahead and take an example let's say that i put utility at 4 so this means that i'm going to say x into y should give me 4 now i need to go ahead and have different values of x and y that give me 4 so let's say that x is here and y is here so 4 into 1 is 4 One into four is four. Two into two is four. Sixteen into one by four is four. One by four into sixteen is four, and so on and so forth. These are all the different combinations of x and y that give you the same level of utility. 
So if I want to go ahead and plot this, I can definitely do that. I will get something like this. This will be X and this will be Y. I can have X at 1 and correspondingly I can have the value of Y at 4. Or I can have Y at 1 and correspondingly my X would be 4 or X at 2 and my Y will also be 2. So these combinations, combination A, B and C, these are the combinations that give you the same level of utility, right? And hence, they are on the same indifference curve. Now, one thing that you could have done is that you could have taken x as minus 4 and y as minus 1. Minus 4 into minus 1 is also 4, right? So I could have had u is equal to xy where x is minus 4 and y is minus 1. What's the problem in this? The problem in this is that I am talking about goods. And goods can only be positive. So when I talk about consumption, Consumption can only be positive, right? So how do I represent this mathematically that I only want positive values? I do not want negative values. It's pretty simple. I will go ahead and say that X represents a consumption set. whatever you want to consume. This belongs to real numbers, but I will only take positive values of real numbers. And the moment I write an N here, it means that this is applicable for all N goods that belong to your consumption set. So all the goods, all N goods, I may be consuming good one, good two, good three till good N. All these N consumption goods that I'm talking about, I am saying that it can only be positive. It cannot be negative. This is how I go ahead and I represent it. Now, <clears throat> here, you know, we can do three things in maths. When I say R, it means it includes minus infinity to infinity. When I say R plus, it means zero to infinity. When I say R plus plus, it means it is zero to infinity. But when I talk about consumption, consumption can either be zero or positive. I can consume zero units also, right? I don't want a single unit of pollution, right? I don't want a single unit of maybe mushroom. I don't like mushrooms. So consumption can be zero or positive. So this is what is applicable to consumption sets. But when I talk about prices, prices are usually assumed to be only positive. We don't assume prices even to be zero. I mean, there can be free goods also. Like I can go uh, to a Ganga Kinare and just take some water. That's free. But usually when it comes to market, prices are assumed to be strictly positive. So better this part is applicable to prices which are 
strictly positive. So we will not include the zero component there. So I will say price belongs to Rn or just put a plus plus here. That's it. Right. Now, <clears throat> as we progress, I will go ahead and give you questions on free goods also. But free goods have their own complexities, right? If a good is free, right, and it gives you positive utility, like I love pizzas and pizza is free, then I want to consume infinite amount of that good. So how will I deal in that case is something we will take at some point of time in some push. But for now, we just want to assume that prices are strictly positive. Okay, that's the important thing that you have to understand. Now, <clears throat> let's move ahead and let us consider about a concept of ordinality versus cardinality. When we talk about indifference curves, indifference curve is assumed to be an ordinal concept. What is ordinal? Ordinal means anything where ranking is possible. Cardinality is related to numbers. Like, if you go ahead and you tell me that product A gives you a utility of 5 and B gives you a utility of 4, then you have given numbers to it. That, you know, giving numbers to it, that becomes a cardinality concept. But when we talk about this, that you know what? I prefer A to B, irrespective. Whether A gives you 5 and B gives you 4, or A gives you utility of 5 and B gives you 4.99999, does not matter. I go ahead and I give more ranking to A. When we talk about ranking, when that is all that matters to me, that becomes an ordinal concept. Throughout, we are just interested in the concept of ordinality. Cardinality is not going to mean much to me. As long as you can tell me you prefer A to B, it does not matter to me whether A gives you 5 and B 4 or A gives you 5 and B 0. You have to tell me what is the ranking of the bundles and that is enough to me. Right? Now, you know, before we further go ahead, we talk about something which is known as the axioms of rationality. Very important beta from the exam point of view. And before we talk about axioms of rationality, we must ask ourselves, who is a rational consumer? So the question is, who is a rational consumer? But a, a rational consumer is one who maximizes his or her own welfare. If I am concerned with my welfare, I watch a movie because I like it. I am studying economics because I like it, not because of peer pressure, not because my parents want me to study that. I am maximizing my utility. I am doing a thing because I love it. 
that is called being a rational consumer so rational individual is any individual who maximizes his or her own welfare right and that is why we maximize utility of a person because we assume that person to be rational so we can say that rational consumers please write this down is are any consumer who maximizes their own welfare so if you maximize your own utility or own welfare automatically you become rational now in an assignment um as we progress i will give you examples who are not rational consumers who are irrational consumers and one you will see coming in the in the in the assignment one such example is called altruism altruism is when you care about the need and happiness of other people more than your own so you know if if you are one such person who kind of says you know i am not concerned about myself the society should be happy then you are not rational you are altruistic in nature right so any person who cares about the welfare of others over his own that person is called an altruistic human being so so mathematically let's think about it if i say this is individual a and his utility depends on how much of good x and y he consumes and this is what he wants to maximize of course subject to his income his budget then he is rational but if in some way the individual a's utility function is affected by how much of good x b is consuming then he is getting utility from the consumption of individual b's uh, units that means he is not rational he is not acting rationally in economics we always assume that the individual should be rational and now the question is okay okay yes anu so so the last line says that here individual b a's utility is affected by the consumption of b's good x how much x b consumes because i have a b here so individual a gets affected from consumption of individual b that means he is not rational he would have been rational if he only considers how much of x and y he consumes not the other person right so that is the concept of rationality now the question is yes altruism is an example of irrationality ideally it, because you are not maximizing with subject to your own uh, you know consumption so you're not being rational enough so you are being an altruistic human being we'll do a numerical on this also it, it's it's an important topic now the question is how do i ask myself that the individual is rational are there any pointers that i can say acha this 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 satisfied therefore rational so yes 
those pointers itself are called axioms of rationality. And the first pointer that, that we write here, this is called completeness. So what is completeness? Completeness says, let's first understand, then we'll write, given any two consumption bundles, a consumer should be able to compare. He must be able to say whether I prefer X over Y or Y over X or whether I'm indifferent between the two. The consumer should not say, I don't know. He should be able to tell what he prefers. He should be able to compare. So let's write down, given any two, consumption bundles, consumer should be able to compare. So he should be able to say, look, I prefer X over Y. Peter, look that this is not greater than, please. This is a little like this. This is a sign of preference. When you prefer X over Y, then the utility from X is greater than the utility from Y. This is the sign of greater. So look at the difference. This is preference. This is greater than. Right. So consumer should be able to compare. He should be able to tell whether he prefers X over Y or Y over X or he is indifferent between X and Y. But indifference means utility from X equal to utility from Y. But this is the sign of indifference. So he should be able to compare. Right? Now, since I'm talking about these signs, I would like to also highlight that this means strict preference. And this means weak preference. Weak preference has two parts to it. Either this or this. Let me give you an example. When I say utility of X is strictly more than utility of Y, that means X is strictly preferred over Y. But when I say utility of X is either greater than or equal to utility of Y, but then it means that X is weakly preferred to Y. So you have to understand strict and weak preference with respect to converting it back into the form of utility. If my utility is strictly more than the other consumption bundle, then I use a strict preference or I use a weak preference. In economics, in many MCQs, in many questions, you will see that this is represented by P. This is represented by R and this is represented by L. So when you write X, I, Y, I am indifferent between X and Y. So I'm writing X, I, Y, indifferent between X and Y. When I say X, P, Y, I prefer X strictly over Y. 
अदरवाइज वीक प्रेफरेंस विल बी एक्स आर वाई सो दीज थ्री थिंग्स आर ऑल्सो यूज इन इकोनॉमिक्स वीक प्रेफरेंस बाय आर स्ट्रिक्ट प्रेफरेंस बाय पी इन डिफरेंस बाय आई राइट सो कमिंग बैक वॉट वो वी सेंग वी वर सेंग वॉट इज कंप्लीटनेस एंड कंप्लीटनेस इज वेन यू टेल वन ऑफ दिस यू शुड नॉट से आई डोंट नो आई गिव यू मूवमेंट ऑल ऑफ यू इन द चैट विंडो विल राइट एंड टेल मी वेन गिव मी एन एनी एग्जाम्पल इज कंप्लीटनेस violated when can we say that completeness is violated let's think about it take a moment indecision absolutely but when will i be able to not decide when is that indecision can you give me an example when we are not able to differentiate between good different bundles of good take an example let's say no time voting very good very uh, unique thought good when there are no goods available okay lack of information okay that that can also be thing both are same goods we'll talk about that point a little while what happens when both are same goods take an example let's say you are in a boat right and okay someone said choose substitutes okay yes roiden when a bundle consists of different goods i can when bundle consists of different goods between two bundles i can still tell na so if for example if you give me mushroom and maybe uh, pollution and if you give me pizza and pasta i will choose the one with pizza pasta so even if it consists of different goods i might be able to do that yes this this is important child selecting toy yes children are usually indecisive in nature they say i don't know so it makes sense in that case yes so so usually you know whenever it comes to human and relationships this is the example i was choosing uh, you know looking for absolutely so so rachit has excellently pointed it out and this is what i was looking for human relations are usually the one that violate completeness so for example if you are in a boat maybe and and you are asked to choose that you can only save either your mother or father you will be indecisive right so human relations are where mostly you will come up and same goes for for children that was also a very good example children are also indecisive human relations are indecisive so when asked to choose between humans i will not be able to choose and that would be a violation of completeness human relations children behavior etc other a rational human being should be able to tell that look i want bundle x or bundle y that is why it is an axiom of rationality now the second axiom of rationality after completeness is transitivity write this transitivity as much as possible in the points of in the in the version of this that i have mentioned above so if you have x p y that means x is strictly preferred to y that means this x is strictly preferred to y and you have y p z y is strictly preferred to z 
then you will have x strictly preferred to z. You can just decode this better. X is strictly preferred to Y, Y is strictly preferred to Z, then X is strictly preferred to Z. I can decode this further. Utility from X is strictly more than utility from Y. Utility of Y is strictly more than utility from Z. Then utility from X is strictly more than utility from Z. This is just this thing written in multiple ways. This is called transitivity. Similarly, if I have X R Y and Y R Z, then I will have X R Z. If I have X I Y and Y I Z, then I will have X I Z. If I'm indifferent between X and Y, indifferent between Y and Z, then I should be indifferent between X and Z. Again, we ask the same question. What is violation of transitivity or exception? To transitivity. Think of some examples if you can from your uh, you know previous studies and tell me when exactly would you see transitivity not being followed. Take a moment. Very, very excellently pointed out voting mechanism which we will study in some while. So yes, that's the first example. Voting mechanism. Don't worry if you've never heard of this before. It comes way, way, way later in microeconomics that I will be talking about. But this is a violation of your transitive. Again, as you rightly pointed out, kids, the right human behavior. Kid may prefer toy A to B, B to C, but C to A, right? Such cases where you prefer A to B, B to C, but C to A, S A, A to B, B to C, but C to A. These kind of preferences are called cyclic preferences. And this is a violation to transit. Right. So as you're, yes. So as you correctly mentioned, uh, Tanishta, when two ICs intersect, we are violating transitivity. So that is also why ICs cannot intersect, in fact. So, so when when we have when do we have a violation of transitivity if it comes in an exam? Well, whenever we have voting mechanism, I will talk about this in my lectures later. Whenever we have cyclical preferences, as it happens with kids, in all such cases, we have violation of transitivity. The third axiom that you must check for in rationality that is called continuity continuity just says that we must have an ic which is smooth which is continuous there should be no discontinuity in my indifference curve let me take an example mathematically so let's say that this is my indifference curve. This is continuous throughout, except a point, say here. At this point, I have a hole. And at this point, it takes the value this. It takes the value A. 
So, so something like this. This is where it is discontinuous. So it's completely smooth. But the moment it reaches here, it becomes discontinuous. And at this point, it takes the value in. Now, what's the problem with this IC? Problem is that it violates the definition of IC of indifference curve. Because we know that an indifference curve should give me the same level of utility. Now, if that happens, then it means that point B, A, and C, they should give you the same utility. But A is clearly above the given IC. I can at any point of time pass a higher IC. And it will not give me the same level of utility. So when I make my indifference curve discontinuous, we are speaking very broadly, it will not be able to represent a rational human being. Now, this concept of discontinuity and continuity, again, maybe next week, by next week, we will dedicate a lecture on this because this has a special preference associated with it and that is called lexicographic preferences. And we will again, we will talk about this in, in much, much detail later on. So we can just have, we'll have a lecture on it. I'll give you all sort of questions that come on lexicographic preferences. But for now, our axiom says that the ICs should be smooth. That we should have no discontinuity. Right? The next axiom that I want to talk about is called reflexiveness. In the most simple terms, so, so here please write down, this is exception, as we are doing in all cases, right? Exception to this axiom. Now, when I talk about reflexiveness, it says any good, or any bundle is as good as itself. So if I go ahead and I give you one Reynolds blue color pen, and I give you another Reynolds blue color pen, which are exactly the same, then you should not say, I prefer this one over this one. So if the product are exactly the same, if the bundle is exactly the same, if my first bundle is four apples and two oranges, and second is also four apples and two oranges, you cannot say I prefer first over the other. That will be wrong. So reflexiveness says any bundle is as good as itself. And we can go ahead and write this like this. Bundle X is as good as bundle X. And when I say as good as, but this is not indifference. This means weak preference. And this is how it is represented. A bundle is as good as itself. Again, we know that with kids, it may fail. I may show him, I may show a kid exactly the same pencil. 
and then also the kid may prefer one over the other okay why not i this is an important question i am always having so so in economics whenever we talk about indifference curves we don't talk about i we always talk about r and r the the weak preference just says that you know i am not saying that i will be completely indifferent between the two i am saying that i will if i have to prefer just weakly prefer one over the other so let me give you an example to this like for example when you know i go to a shop and you show me exactly the same pen two times usually my habit is that i will take that pen and i will just you know write something with it on the paper that the shopkeeper provides me and then i will just do it with another pen and another pen and whichever you know i see is smooth i will just pick up that pen even if it is the same brand pen and it is everything is the same so i cannot 100% be indifferent between the two things but for rationality to hold true i will just say that the weak preference holds true it should not be strict preference i should not be strictly preferring one thing over the other if they are the same i should have that weak preference that is fine but i cannot have a strict preference so it just says you violate reflexiveness with a strict preference strict preference is not allowed weak is allowed weakly you can prefer one good over the other right yes <clears throat> so so in continuity axiom tanishta they just saying that i should not have any breakage in my i see it should be a smooth one i should not be saying that look at this point my indifference curve is not existing its value is here or i cannot go ahead and i cannot have something like this that you know this is my i see and then it takes some discontinuity and then the remaining i see is here this is not allowed my i see at any point of time whether it is a substitute good whether it is a complementary good whether it is a it's an well defined preference it should be continuous and how do i know it is continuous how do in maths we say a thing is continuous in maths one of the most simple things that we do for continuity is if i pick up a pen and i start drawing i should not be picking my pen up if i have to pick my pen up and draw again it becomes discontinuous like is the case here i started drawing i had to stop somewhere pick up my pen and draw again that is not being smooth that's being a discontinuous relationship and this is not allowed yes yes we can still draw ic's of discrete good but it will be discontinuous of course because they will just be points right so that will be these will be discontinuous points yeah so so when you take your maths advanced class you will be talking in detail about limits left hand limit equal to right hand limit equal to value of the function of course makes sense but for from the point of view of microeconomics i just want a uh, discontinuity would simply mean smoothness no breakage of the ic curve that's all that we would require right okay so now i need to go ahead and give you some more pointers let's write those down also how strict preference is violation of reflexive so it is because of the definition of reflexiveness reflexiveness says as good as so the moment you strictly prefer something one thing will not be as good as the other it will be preferred over the other so by the very definition of reflexiveness strict preference would be a violation of this axiom right because the definition states so the definition says as as 
Okay. So, so let's begin with some of the pointers. The first important pointer that we have is that utility cannot be compared between people, but only between goods. What does this mean? It means that, you know, suppose you and me, we, we take a car for drive. And I say, I am getting a utility of 1400 from this car. And you are getting a utility of 1800 from this car. This is A and this is B. But it does not mean that you prefer the car more. Does not mean. Why? Because we are different individuals. Our scale of preference may be very, very different, right? So the way that you go ahead and you tell me that you prefer something, you measure it in utility, will be different from mine. So between people, I cannot say, I cannot say, Achha, from this current government, I get a utility of 1000. How much do you get? You tell me 1500. Does not mean you are more satisfied with the government. Maybe you always scale things a little upwards. So I cannot compare utility between two people. I can compare it between two goods for the same person. So for A, he has been using the same scale in his mind. So for him, I can say a car gives him 1400, TV gives him 1200, watching a movie gives him 2000. He might be using the same scale in his mind for comparing different bundles. So I can go ahead and compare goods, but not utility between people. Right? That's the first thing. Secondly, you have to understand that utility is affected by different factors. like psychological factor. Maybe I went to a movie with my friends. I didn't like it at all. But because my friends kept telling me, you know, it's a good movie. It was a very nice movie. We loved it. It was nice. It was nice. It stuck in my mind that I actually got a good amount of utility from it. So sometimes utility does get affected by some other factors like psychological factors which affect the level of your utility peer pressure psychological factors etc third thing when i talk about utility usually we talk about an n bundle commodity n bundle so you know I will say I utility is a function of how much of good one I consume, good two I consume, till good n. So usually it is n variables. But it becomes very difficult to represent these n variables. So for simplicity, you will always see me. I will give you some questions with three variables. But mostly, you will always see me taking exactly two variables. Utility is how much satisfaction I derive by consuming two commodities. I will not move to the third one. For simplicity. <clears throat> and from here, let me take you through again in maths you will do it in detail better but for my purpose let me take you through another very very important word and that is called as the level curves maybe few of you have heard the concept of level curves what is a level curve let's say that I have 
utility from two commodities and this is a typical cobb douglas function why because x and y are getting multiplied together this is a well defined cobb douglas function now imagine if i ask you to plot this the ideal way of plotting this should be a three dimensional graph why you will tell me look when x is 1 and x2 is 1 u is 1 when x1 is 2 x2 is 1 u is 2 so you can also fluctuate utility by fluctuating x1 and x2 and usually it should be something like this it should be a three dimensional graph i take x1 here i take x2 here i take utility here when x1 is 1 and x2 is 1 then my utility is 1 this is the point and alongside this i should take all such points which give me utility of 1 so you know my x1 could have been half x2 could have been 2 then also my utility would have remained at 1 so it would have been at 1 so ideally beta you will get a complete three dimensional figure and so on and so forth this will be very difficult from economics point of view so since we do not want to make this complicated we will hold the z variable constant what is the z variable this 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 is what we do in ics we hold utility constant that is what i began my lecture with holding utility at 4 so we hold utility constant and then we ask what are the different combinations of good 1 and good 2 that give me the same value of z such cases when you hold this z variable constant this is called a level curve so now i will not fluctuate this i will hold this constant so i will say okay utility is 4 now you give me different combinations of good 1 and 2 that fetch me the same level of utility so ideally speaking and we must write this down that indifference curves are level curves because they are drawn for one level of the value of the z variable of the third variable right so mathematically ics are level curves i just want to talk about one more thing for the day and most of you would have heard of it that is called monotonicity and i want to link this today to something compare it with and link it to something which is called this is what will come in exam monotonic transformation when i talk about monotonicity we know that in the most simple term monotonicity means more is preferred so if i take two bundles a and b monotonicity says that a will be preferred over b if a has at least more of one good and same amount of the other good
so if i take bundle a as 5 comma 5 and b as 5 comma 4 a has at least more of one good which is good 2 and same amount of the other good which is good 1 then i will prefer a over b i can take another example a has more of both the goods then also i will clearly prefer a over b but if it is something like this but then i cannot compare until you give me a utility function until you tell me u is utility function is x into y utility function is x plus y utility function is min of x y until you don't give a utility function i will not be able to compare so here no comparison possible until you give me a utility function yes exactly anu i was absolutely coming to that point so when we talk about bad goods that is a violation of monotonicity because in that case less is preferred we want less of covid 19 in the world we we want less of pollution in the world so bad goods are a violation of monotonicity now but many students confuse monotonicity with monotonic transformation that is different monotonic transformation means positive transformation it means i want to go ahead and transform my utility function in a way such that the slope of ic which is nothing but it's called mrs it remains unchanged so to give you an example if my utility function is xy and i multiply my utility function with maybe 2 or i take log with my utility function or i add something to my utility function but these are all monotonic transformations of your utility function it means that when you will find the slope of this it will come to be the same let us take this example so utility function is xy so what is the slope marginal rate of substitution what is this differentiate with respect to x differentiate with respect to y so when i differentiate this with respect to x i will hold y constant i will get y when i will differentiate it with respect to y i will hold x constant so i will get x when i have my utility function as 2xy beta then my mrs will be again differentiate with respect to x differentiate with respect to y so when you will differentiate it with respect to x you will get 2y when you will differentiate with respect to y you will get 2x so you will get the same y by x as long as you get the mrs to be the same it's a monotonic transformation very important it came in a gate exam i'll tell you how it came a little later once we do substitute goods etc etc but it was a monotonic transformation of substitute goods that came in exam so as long as my mrs is the same it is a monotonic transform right so this is uh, where we will end for the day
Now, what you have to do is, I'm going to go ahead and post an assignment. That's going to be your first assignment for the day. There are some questions on budget line. You have to go ahead and I'm going to you know, guide you how to study the course. So in the meanwhile, you also have to do chapter two beta of intermediate micro if you have never done that before. That should suffice. Chapter two is on budget lines. Try reading through that also. And I will talk more about budget lines in the in the next lecture, but still I want you to go ahead and go through that. So you have to do this questions. Right. If you can see this is just. Talking about uh, the the you know. The budget line and if you come below. You will notice that these are the questions, especially this is what I want you to do, even if you skip this one. Maybe you can just take the above ones after the next class. But what I want you to focus on for the day is going to be this one. The ones which are below. This has to be done for sure. These questions, these have to be practiced. These are all on axioms of rationality. So you see, this says, are the, are the preferences transitive? Is it complete? Can you represent it with a preference or not? So these are the questions which you must practice and come before your next class. Uh, no, so chapter two, not of variant beta from the intermediate videos. Yeah, it is, it is based out of variant. But if you go through the intermediate videos, it would be better. Why? Because there you will have uh, the food stamp program also, right? Explained in much, much better detail. You will, I, I've also talked about King budget lines, right? So it is a good idea to go through chapter two of your intermediate videos rather than two of your variant. And this assignment and today's lecture would be available on your portal by by maybe another two, three hours by 12, maybe midnight. The assignment should be available on the portal and so should be your uh, lecture that we have taken today. OK. OK, so before the next class, which is day after tomorrow, I suggest that you at least do chapter two and three if possible and come. Uh, it's not necessary to complete chapter two before the next class. It's suggested in case you think you have your semester exam still going on or you think that you know you have uh, other other exams going on. In that case, it's OK. You can go ahead and complete those over the weekends. But my suggestion is chapter two and three should be done along with the way we are progressing with the live lectures. OK, so assignments would be posted just below the lectures that we take. So every lecture I take just below that you will see the assignment and uh, whichever questions I find can be tricky. You will also find solution to those questions below the question paper. Uh, there is no need to touch Snyder. I have covered everything related to Snyder in my live lectures. So as we progress, you will see me talking a lot from Snyder also. The questions which are important from Snyder, after every chapter we finish, after every talk we finish, I will again be pointing out that do question four, five, six from Snyder book, post which you will also see me posting the solutions to the Snyder book. So you can just pick up on the questions. No need to do the chapters in detail from Snyder. Uh, but the intermediate videos are there on the portal only. If you look at the intermediate section, you will find it. Lectures are more than sufficient if you do the questions that I give you along with it. 
you need to practice a lot so if you look at my assignment today it includes question from gate iit and additional questions so you have to do the lecture and those questions and it should suffice along with the intermediate lectures that i suggest to you touching the book would not be required don't worry so kushi in case you're not able to go ahead and find the intermediate videos just drop a whatsapp on the arthur point number and and they should be able to show you that yes two and three from intermediate should be done it would be a good practice on the budget lines and utilities okay what what else questions do we have okay so till when can we expect the syllabus to be completed uh beta micro is usually the biggest chunk for any entrance exam if because we have started now june july and august also you will see me only talking micro then we pick up on macro and stats and during december we pick up on econometrics and some parts of indian eco december it would be finished jan say you will have a full fledged timetable week mein two to three mock tests you will be giving you will be doing some marathons jan onwards will only be tests doubts can be cleared simultaneously whatever doubt you have just post it on telegram and get that cleared i was very very busy with our cuet last batch it their exam is tomorrow so most probably with that we we have one or two more exams left with them i still have to prepare them for iit kanpur written test but then you know we wrap up that batch completely okay yes we will i will give you some part related to the the common part of gate also i am i have already started yes uh, not too much of english more of logic quantitative i have started preparing some videos on that that would also be available for you okay so as far as the syllabus of entrance is concerned uh, each entrance has its own syllabus as you would know cuet is a very theoretical paper now isi is completely mathematical iit and gate may iit is mathematical gate comparatively is a little less mathematical igi dr is uh, having some parts of basic maths which in include class 10th and 12th so good uh, you know um, the syllabus as you are asking me will be different from each entrance so what i will do is when we cover these classes i will go ahead and take every syllabus into account and then do the advanced lecture but still when we sit for a particular entrance exam just like currently with my past batch we are only focusing on theory because they have cuet you know we are doing the name of economists we are doing you know different international economic theories etc etc because cuet mein wahi aata hai but once that is done as i told you their next exam is iit kanpur written exam i will change the approach with them then i will just be doing mathematical part with them when they are sitting for igidr i will only give them questions on trigonometry basic maths right so beta syllabus for each entrance will be different for now we will go ahead and we will do a universal course december tak the aim is to do universal course and then we will go ahead and we will pick topic by topic based on kaun sa exam kab aa raha hai uske basis pe we will do it further no beta so you need to do this assignment by day after tomorrow by wednesday tomorrow you will have your regular maths class for this assignment all the solutions will be available on your portal some in recorded format some in my written format and i will give you all the solutions still if you have a doubt after i post the solution then after the next class the wednesday class at the end of the class related to this assignment if you have any doubt we will clear that no 
so we will go alternatively sneha micro math micro math and micro that is how we will go okay so so as you asked example of monotonic transformation is whenever you go ahead and you transform a function such that your mrs remains the same mrs is the you know the the slope of your ic so basically if i take a substitute good example again you know with with time we will take multiple more examples but if i take beta this this is called substitute goods we'll do it in the next class and if i multiply this by just 2 this is a monotonic transformation why because i just multiplied by 2 nothing changed the slope of this utility function did not change so if i find its slope it is by differentiating with respect to x divided by differentiating with respect to y i will get 1 and if i find its slope if i differentiated with respect to x 2 differentiated with respect to y 2 so 2 by 2 is also 1 so as long as your slope remains the same that is called monotonic transformation okay what is the difference between iit jam and gate so <clears throat> different universities beta for example iit delhi sub sub do no iit jam and gate is for iit only iit delhi does not accept gate score iit kanpur does accept gate score so it, madras accepts it so it depends on which iit we are aiming for i strictly tell my students abhi we are not the choosers here we are the beggars koi bhi iit mil raha take admission so you have to give both iit jam and gate gate has an intensive course gate mein development eco bhi aa jata hai de gate mein international eco bhi aata hai iit mein nahi aata but iit is very you know very strict in the way that they ask questions it, it was a very difficult paper this time so for now you have to prepare for both iit and gate don't think about who will which iit does what we have to prepare ourselves for both yes it will require a 3 year degree a gate requires a 3 year degree if you have done your bachelor's it is enough uh then we have which is more difficult if you are asking then dsc i am not sure if it is going to be difficult anymore because it will be part of cuet let's wait for tomorrow's exam क्या आता है सीयूटी में आफ्टर डीएससी हैज एंटर्ड सीयूटी आईएसआई इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट यस एंड सो इज आईआईटी सो दैट सो यू नो जस्ट डे बिफोर यस्टरडे आई वाज हैविंग अ टॉक विद वन ऑफ माय पास्ट स्टूडेंट्स एंड शी टोल्ड मी दैट शी हैज गॉट अ पैकेज ऑफ 24 लैक्स एंड शी पास्ड आउट फ्रॉम आईजीआईडीआर सो इट्स नॉट दैट द अदर यूनिवर्सिटीज आर नॉट गुड वी विल बी फोकसिंग ऑन आईजीआईडीआर एज मच एज आई विल बी फोकसिंग ऑन आईएसआई Our aim is to get good package, right? So IGDR is also very good. Okay, beta. So Lewis, Harris, Todaro, all these growth models would be available as part of the recorded course. But solo model itself, I will be giving at least three to four, maybe five lectures also. So solo comes in mathematical format. That is why solo will be done in live class. Um. then harry domer will be done in live class the the concepts which are theoretical you will be given video how many degrees year degree beta 3 year degree 3 year degree is fine for any of the master courses yes you can ask doubts related to previous lectures in the live classes so so usually once i end the one hour session post that you can tell me that you know maybe you didn't understand the concept of continuity you didn't understand a particular axiom and we will revise that together anything else beta i will cover all the concepts which are 
common and common means common across different exams and most often asked in the live classes you will see me covering almost everything of microeconomics in live class recordings are usually given for topics like indian eco agricultural sector railways in pe there is no no discussion to be done so those things are covered in the recordings still for indian eco whenever it, there is an exam let's say it is asked in iit we will do a marathon i will give you important questions of indian eco we'll take the discussion through those important questions but for topics like five year plan it's it's there it's going to be there on your portal i think it's still not there because you know we have just started today so now slowly things will keep getting uploaded there and you will be informed of those things so i mean iit jam this year was much difficult than it came last year and that was much difficult that it came in the first year they are slowly increasing their level and that is why we have to be very thorough with the kind of questions that they ask in exam bsc students are eligible for gate with maths as major yes you are do you i mean you still have to check do you ha still have one subject as economics or not but i think with maths also it works sneha let me get back to you on that one bcom is fine yes with bcom you can go ahead and give any m economics exam yes yes that is fine okay any other question okay so let me still check i think there should not be an issue if you have maths as major um let me come back to you on what are the what are the policies of uh, you know gate i think it, it's not an issue if you have if you have done in maths so uh you cannot go ahead and you cannot i mean it will be very impossible to cover all intermediate lectures before attending these lectures so you know whatever lecture i point you out to that you know bas chapter 2 kar lo abhi ke liye chapter 3 kar lo just do those better don't do all of those it will be very difficult if now you sit and you <clears throat> try to cover all 33 chapters you will miss out on the live content so for now if you have covered up to demand very good it will just help you to analyze what i do in my current lectures more but um, if you have just taken admission today if you have just started then in that case beta only chapter 2 and 3 of intermediate videos before the next uh, advanced lecture is fine dheere dheere i will tell you agli bari i will tell you do chapter 4 and come along with intermi along with the advanced lecture and do chapter 4 so take take smaller steps don't aim at doing everything at one go how should we strategize our preparation okay so for now khushi you have to go ahead and just do this intermediate lecture and the assignment on saturday or sunday you will have a test do that test that test will include questions related to chapter 2 3 and 4 of your intermediate videos 
and it will include whatever I have done in advance. It will all be in form of MCQs. Do those tests. That should be enough for you to prepare for any entrance exam. Maybe by next week on the portal, you will see all questions of IIT 2021 in recorded format, IIT 2022 in recorded format. You don't have to do all of those for now. That's why I don't post all my material together. Otherwise, students just pick up haphazardly any topic. Only those questions of IIT which you see in your assignment. Like, for example, here when I go ahead and I show you your assignment, assignment one talks about a particular question of IIT. It says you need to do question two, four from 2021. You can look at the recording. You can understand, you know, what, what went wrong and you can just do that. No need to do anything over and above what I am suggesting. This should be very much enough. Slowly you will see, I will give you so many questions that you will find these itself to be a lot. Abito, I will slowly start adding now that from Snyder chapter to do this, 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 then do these additional questions. Then you will think this itself is a lot, right? So this should be enough what I'm giving you. Yes, you're eligible. If you are a BMS graduate, you are eligible. No, no weightage given to CGPA or she, but uh, you should have a minimum of 50% in your graduation for many entrance exams. But everyone is typing, maybe that's why. No, nobody is saying something. So that is why you, you are not able to hear the questions. Only Delhi University will take admission on merit basis if you are from Delhi University. Otherwise, there is no merit concept. Everything has to be on the basis of entrance exam. You have to give the exam. Okay. All right. So before you come for the next lecture, I want you to go ahead and do this assignment and then come. Level of math is different Rijul, in every exam. CUET will just ask you integrate cos x. Whereas IIT will give you a question on as big as a de Morvis theorem. So, so, so it depends. Our aim should not only be CUET, right? So depending on the aim, we should be doing it depending on the exam. So if it is IIT that I am giving, I should be doing everything related to math. If it is CVT that I am giving, math, not a lot of it is required. Basic integration, basic, basic set theory, what is a power set, what is a subset should be sufficing. So bit of a lot of you who are not from economics background may feel that you have not heard the terms like indifference curve, like marginal rate of substitution, no problem. That's why I suggest you to, so, so you know, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about it. The only way to resolve this is to go ahead and sit <coughs> with the intermediate videos. Once I can guarantee you, once you do chapter two and three of my intermediate videos and you come the next time, you would know what an indifference curve is. You would know what marginal rate of substitution is. You would know multiple more things, right? What is utility, right? So it is okay. Now is the time to, to pick up the pace, right? And for many of you, especially in Delhi University, the exams just ended on 31st, right? So June is the month which is which is to be used to pick up on the concepts that you have never ever heard if you're not from an economics background. So nothing to worry for now. Still, don't skip the advanced classes. Nahi kuch bhi aara, just keep writing what I'm writing. Don't skip on that one hour and simultaneously try to go through those intermediate videos. You will get through those words.
okay so i know many of you are from um, from engineering background but that's fine i mean if i go and i start if you take start teaching me btech i won't understand the word the the idea is to go through the intermediate videos simultaneously okay so i think then we should uh, then be meeting day after tomorrow and i hope that you do these these videos that i'm suggesting you reading book raj is not required alongside the lectures but doing the assignments is required okay thank you good night bye